you guys know that I think Days Gone is pretty underrated. I actually think that it's it's a pretty solid game. It's got plenty of clunk, plenty of issues. I actually, I would have done it differently if I could go back in time now, but at the time I gave Days Gone my game of the year because I didn't want to give it to uh, to Death Stranding because I thought Death Stranding's story was just so asinine I couldn't I couldn't handle it as much as I liked delivering packages and stuff I just, and found it relaxing I just could not justify giving it game of the year so I was like what else is there I'll give it to the game I want to see a sequel for the most that was my my metric so I was like oh I'll give Days Gone the game of the year award and over the years it's kind of become a cult classic people have actually started to really get stoked on it and want to give it a, a real chance and a lot of people have played it it went to playstation um plus for a while i don't know if it still is there but people were able to download it for a while and then it came to pc a ton of people played it on pc i think it sold over a million copies there alone so people were really really into it right which is great you know I, i'm glad to see it but something happened there was a big falling out within the developers uh like the upper levels of the developers and they decided to part ways so john garvin who um was like the the game's director primary director he left the studio sony bend and that was after you know he was really frustrated with sony's response to the game they apparently didn't give them much support on the back end they also said they basically got their sequel canned and then whatever the Days Gone studio was being given to work on next, they were were not super thrilled with it. Um, John Garvin also blamed the negative response of the game. Let me pull this up. This is from a year and a half ago. He said that the response and middling reviews were because of tech issues and woke reviewers. And his specific things, uh, what he specifically said was it had reviewers who couldn't be bothered to actually play the game. And three, it had woke reviewers who couldn't handle a gruff white biker looking at his date's ass. Yeah, and there were there were a couple of instances that were linked in like the comments. I remember seeing that original post and they pointed to like uh, clips of of reviewers being like, and it's just another gruff white male to play with. And it's disappointing to see Sony take so many steps back in terms of diversity and stuff with this protagonist and his love interest being white bikers. And it's like, yeah, that's a stupid reason to hate on the game. I agree. But as somebody that likes the game, it did have technical issues. It did have some kind of annoying things where he would constantly talk to himself. And, you know, there were issues with the game. I think to dismiss it because the main character is white is absolutely ridiculous. I would, I would agree with him there, but I don't think that's the only reason. But I don't think he's saying it's the only reason it was poorly received uh, or at least received mixed reactions. But Sony Bend, they distanced themselves from Garvin afterwards, and it caused just a lot of drama. But what has all of this led to? What's the point of all of this? Well, we haven't known what the Days Gone studio has been working on pretty much since. I mean, they worked on a couple of, like, there were rumors they were working with Naughty Dog to help on The Last of Us Online for a bit, but then it wasn't clear if that was absolutely happening. And then after a little while, it was said that they were working on their own game finally. And so we were all like, ooh, interesting. But what's happened is there is a job listing that's been posted, okay? This job listing, let's just hear it, okay? It's at PlayStation Global in Bend, Oregon. This is PlayStation Sony Bend Studios, okay, in Bend, Oregon. Beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, it looks just like the game, basically. I mean, they basically just set the game in their hometown. And what this job entails is uh, it's very, very disheartening <laughs> as somebody that was interested in this studio a lot. Um, it's it's basically just a, a lead project manager job. So in, in typical respects, you know, it's a leadership role within the studio. They coordinate activities in a scaled, agile environment, working with multiple stakeholders, product owners, craft leads, producers, cross-discipline scrum teams, and uh, work to develop potentially shippable product and increments deliverables each sprint. Basically, the project manager is going to be in charge of supervising development on a project that has multiple phases of deliverables. Now, this could just be a regular game. It could be like, okay, we need to deliver one, like, the, the beta at 0.5, we need to deliver regular updates. We have to ship 1.0 and then we have to do these patches and these side releases and things, but that's not actually what it is. You notice that it, it specifically mentions working with multiple stakeholders, working to 
provide potentially shippable product increments and deliverables each sprint. It's starting to sound like individual little deliverables at regular paces, right? That's not super, super common in the single player space, right? What are the other requirements? Let me show you. <laughs> Proven experience, five years in project or project management within the gaming industry, a deep understanding of game development cycles, processes, and latest trends with emphasis on live operations. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Stinky. Stinky. You starting to, to see uh, what's happening? Starting to see what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this basically goes through hands-on game development experience in leadership roles, shipping AAA live service games. Oh. Oh. And they, they just break down in extended detail how this job is for a project manager that needs experience in live service projects specifically, which is quite disappointing. In this article, it also says that ideally these successful applicant will have, quote, experience redefining studios from traditional boxed product focused game development into live service development studios in a key leadership role. So they're straight up saying the person who gets this job should have a history of transforming a single player development studio that ships traditional boxed products. And they need to be able to transform the studio into a live service one and be in a leadership role uh, during that. So they said that they were working on a game that was going to take like the, the, progress and the tools and open world elements and systems from days gone and transform it into a new game. But it seems like now that new game is just going to be a big live service game and uh, nothing, nothing more. Really, really disappointing to see, honestly, really disappointing. And now it's starting to make sense why so many of the leadership of the studio left. It's starting to make sense why a lot of the like writers and stuff left. They, they've, they're just moving on, which is just disappointing. I mean, it's too bad. It's too bad. And this is once again, another holdover of the Jim Ryan legacy of just taking their single player, single party studios and trying to transform them into live service studios, um, to pump out more live service games. And maybe their live service game ends up being awesome. Maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe it is just days gone, but in MMO with these hordes of zombies and stuff, that could be interesting because the hordes were super cool and that was some impressive tech they had. So maybe they do something like that. I don't know, but it's damn disappointing to see that not only are we not getting Days Gone 2 or anything, but the studio is hiring people specifically to transform it into a, a live service development studio, which is just really, really frustrating. Yeah, I mean, back in 2021, Sony confirmed that Bend was working on a new IP, which was building on the deep open world systems they developed with Days Gone, which deep open world systems developed on a single player game. We all thought that meant they were working on a single player game. They they were not. Apparently, they've been working on a live service game and they're still hiring to uh, expand that out. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but um, it seems that Sony has chosen to bend bend studios over and raw dog them with live service stuff unfortunately which is just disappointing unfortunately looks like their days are gone <laughs> yeah. looks like their their days gone too <laughs> he took my thing <laughs>